All right, starting the video now. Yeah. Start with a nice shot of Castle of Aleppo, wedding celebration, <laughs> wherever that is. <laughs> yeah, girls are so this castle yeah. started in the third millennium BC, exactly. one of the oldest and largest in the world. Good place to start because during the war, during which, let's actually go around a little bit so we can hear anything. <laughs> so during the war, in Aleppo, which is one of the biggest battle sites of the war, exactly, the yeah. Syrian army was inside this castle, and the rebels were in the souk just over there. And for that reason, this whole neighborhood, including the souk, is one of the most destroyed areas of Aleppo, sadly, as you can see right here. And we have number one tour guide all of Syria. Thank you. Mohammed. Thank you so much. <laughs> nice to meet you. Who unfortunately lived in Aleppo for the duration of the war. So I guess we can start at the beginning. The war started 2010. 2011. 2011. Yeah, 2011. And when did the fighting first come to Aleppo? Um, it started, started, sorry, at like somehow we can say the beginning of 2013. 2013, okay. And so when it first came, like the very, very beginning of the fighting in Aleppo? Yeah. What was it like here, like it living here? It started from the countryside, of course. Then they tried to enter the, the city of Aleppo, mm -hmm. then moving from the east part of the city. So Aleppo was between the east part and the west part. So the, most of the people moved from the east and to the west part, mm -hmm. which, is, which was under control of the Syrian government. And then, and of course, the fighting every now and then mm -hmm. you can hear from the east part to the west part until 2017 and the beginning of 2018. They had this agreement. The, the Syrian army went all around the all, all around the city of Aleppo. They uh, and it was under control of them. And the rebels were outside some of the countryside, and some of them moved to the city of Idlib. And so you said around 8 million people left the city during the war? Not, uh, you mean Aleppo? Yeah. No, not just Aleppo. We can say like the population of Aleppo used mm -hmm. to be like 7, 8 million before oh, okay. the war. But now I think it's not more than 4 million. So these four, the majority of them traveled. And until nowadays, people still still traveling because of the inflation that we have in uh, Syria. Yeah. And so when was the fighting the worst in the in Aleppo? Here, in this yeah, area. Like a, no, no, when? Like what year? Huh, when year it finished? The war? Or? When, when was the, the conflict the worst? Like when did it get the most bad? We can say 14, 15, 16, these three okay. years. Yeah. And you were living the entire, 2011, the entire way. Yeah, exactly. And so you told me something, which sounds like it's out of a movie, which is that, so Muhammad's house is in the apartment blocks, which are considered the nicest areas of Aleppo. Obviously, many of them are destroyed now, but he couldn't leave his house because there was a rebel sniper yeah. stationed outside. Yeah. And so if he left the house, obviously, you'd walk right into the so sniper. If, you, if we want to go outside the house, we mm -hmm. used to have the technique. Inside many buildings, we have a big hole to go all around from one building to another and moving outside the area. So you can go inside buildings, inside halls, inside buildings from one after another to go outside the area. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, we couldn't like, I, I couldn't stay with my family during the war because I have university and I have to go every day. So it would be somehow like difficult for me to go every day outside the area. And one of the most interesting things you told me was that so your family, they got essentially taken hostage by the rebel militia. Yeah, but, for one week. But the, the militia didn't speak any Arabic because they weren't Syrian and they were Arabic. 90% of the people they met, they were not Arabic. They didn't speak Arabic. Yeah, they were Chinese and Chechen, which if you, if you read the, the mainstream media in the US, you'll essentially hear that the war was all just people who didn't like Bashar and they wanted to overthrow him because he's a dictator. But talking to you, you said that in Syria, most of the people believe, after, after looking at the evidence, they rightfully believe that it was kind of, uh, it was coordinated by outside countries who all have different stakes in the region and the resources. So for instance, America's bankrolling the Kurds in the east near Kurdistan, because they have all the oil. Turkey's bankrolling, <laughs> Turkey and Russia, bankrolling the uh, rebel militias because they're close to the Turkish border. They want a stable border. And obviously you have ISIS as well. But it's, uh, it's not what you would read in the, in the US media or the Western media 
that it's all Syrians fighting against Bashar because even the militias themselves were hired mercenaries from outside countries. And so you were telling me that in Syria, it's not so much about Bashar versus outside, or Bashar versus uh, uh, people who don't like him. It was more of like an external politics that are tearing your country apart. Part of the, the castle was destroyed also from the earthquake. Oh yeah, so the earthquake. It's not allowed for us to visit as I told you before. Mm -hmm. And so there's so much destruction on the way from Damascus to over here, like hundreds of kilometers of yeah. villages destroyed. It's pretty impressive, just like the scale of it. What kind of like weapons and fighting, Everything like how how did Ever, like missiles, Everything. guns, tanks, moving from tanks to the RPGs to the AK-47. So everything that you it comes to your mind. So it happened here in Syria. And when you were living in Aleppo during the the siege and everything, yeah. the two month long siege, what was yeah. that like? It was like around 64, 65 days. So we are out of electricity. I remember when I was here in, in, in Aleppo, so I had an exam test for university. I used the, the light of the lighter, imagine. Wow. To, yeah, to study, yeah. So it was very difficult for me. Uh, and also the electricity was the main problem and the, the water. So the water was, of course, they, they cut the, the, the water so we don't have. So we used with the special tubes from the outside in the mosques to have uh, big bottles of water to come the, uh, to come to the mosque mm -hmm. and fill them with the water and take them back to, to the house. And then, so even outside the siege, but obviously during the siege, what was it like on the... Sorry. What was... It's okay. Yeah. So, as I told you, even with the, the war, three years, four years, five years, mm -hmm. it is somehow not safe for you to go outside like we are now and walk because you don't know when the like the fighting starts again so we prefer just to stay at, at your house and if something happened you go to the basement mm -hmm. until everything is back to the normal again and did you ever see any like encounters with the militias no, okay me, no. and any of your friends no? no okay so they're all kind of just staying inside yeah. mind their own business i guess the smart thing to do. But yeah, I mean, walking around the city, just seeing the level of destruction, and not even just here, but every single city that we go to, is just crazy. It's very sad. And you can see down there, destroyed. And in terms of the economy, yeah. Recovering, obviously, there's so a lot of inflation during, now. But. Though, considering the economy, during the war, we were living like for the the rate of everything, or for mm -hmm. the salary of everything was somehow cheap for us. But when the war ended in Syria in 2018, the, the other war has started, which is the economical war. Mm -hmm. So it was from 2018, 19, and until nowadays. The inflation went crazy, so we can say that in before 2019 if we want to to say uh 500 syrian pound equals one us now it is more than 13 thousands for wow. one us so we can't say it is doubled for 10 times or 20 times damn and that all happened after the war ended after the war ended. wow And so 2018, the rebels and Bashar signed a peace agreement, putting all the rebels in Idlib, a small city kind of near Aleppo, I guess a large city. But do you think, uh, how stable do you think that is? Now everything is under control of the, the countries now. It is all about politics, but the war has ended and we hope so it's not going to happen again. Now we have the economic so we hope like something in the near future will happen here that like, can take control of the, the, the rate of the US or 
to get back to the normal life before 2011. Yeah, and one other thing that you told me that was very surprising, because you'll never hear it on the Western media, is that when Bashar took power in 2000, he was actually very popular because... We call that, it the golden, the golden decade. So the, the golden, golden decade. The golden 10 age. We have specially in tourism, because if you read in the news, in 2008, 2009, the foreigners or the tourists, the percentage of them used to be 8 million. Mm. Imagine, with a country like Syria, we have 8 million tourists that came to, to this, in, in this year. And you said that he was instituting a lot of technological reforms that kind of it, it really advanced Syria. Like what? Yeah. I mean, one that you mentioned was credit cards, but like what, what other everything, things? Everything, everything. Like we were about to be like, as I told you, the other Dubai in that time. So we, we were planning to make the skyscrapers, the, the credit cards, some rules depending on the smoking, for example. So everything that comes to your mind, we were planning to do that. So people really liked Bashar when he, when he first started. Because, <laughs> you know, you'll, if you look up on Western media, I was trying to, uh, after you told me about that, I was trying to look up at like, the golden age of Syria, technology, all that. They, nothing. You're not going to find anything about that. Yeah. Let's see if you can walk in here for a sec. I'm guessing this is a military fortification because of the sandbags. But now it seems like things are recovering to a certain degree. I mean, you have a lot more tourists. People are living relatively normal life as much as they can. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, I mean, walking around just by the people, you couldn't tell. I mean, obviously the, the physical state of things is bad, but the people seem to be doing well. Families are kind of out there and just, you know, living their normal lives. Exactly. So here people like to live. They want to, to live like normal life as the people from outside there. Yeah. And most, and a lot of the city is perfectly normal. I mean, the infrastructure is fine. The buildings are still intact. It's just this, uh, certain parts of the different cities across the country are completely destroyed, more or less, as you can see. But yeah, that's some interesting information on the Syrian war yeah. from a local. Yeah. They're not going to read the news, so. Inshallah, Syria will heal. Yeah, Inshallah, we hope so, of course, we hope so. We, as you see, like, people of all of them are working to, to like rebuild this country because of course like, everyone loves this country so yeah very beautiful place yeah.